Hey friends, for this video I'm going to be working on this French Provencial nightstand, but I'm using the same techniques that I'll also be using on the dresser. A little bit of shading, a little bit of blending. We're going to make these sets look beautiful. So to match the dresser, we need to do blending and what I call shading on this. Really, and then also I'll do some shading on the spine or the corner. I'm not sure what the official term is. I mentioned the colors I use. This is tea rose. We'll use pink champagne for the highlight. And then I mixed a custom color of driftwood and peony. And so it's kind of loose. I don't really have the breakdown. I just use a little driftwood to kind of mute that peony because peony is really pink. My favorite, one of my favorite blending brushes is just my never dying oval small. I just love how feathered that is. And then I've got a one inch part of the artist brush set. T rose, here we go. And I'll use a one inch uh, flat small basically. And this has already two coats of paint on it. Move my lights around a little bit. So all we're really doing now, I don't need another coat of paint on here. I'm just basically putting paint on here so I can blend. But earlier today, I put the second coat of paint on this project. So it really is just waiting for the final touches. Okay, that's enough paint. We'll get the pink champagne out. Also, one of the things that I did is I use this color I've talked about and I put it in this groove and I'll see if I can do that for you today as well. All right, so we're going to use the one inch, br uh, one inch brush to add the highlight color. And usually I just put a, um, a stripe or a band of color. Let's see if I can, I usually rehearse my common statement for how to blend no matter what the application is, work quickly, light touch, and keep it wet. So I'm gonna do a quick mist on there just to give me a little bit extra. All our goal at this point is, is to remove brush strokes. We want them to be invisible. I'm using a light touch. This brush is basically mixing. I think I brought you in too close. Just use a light touch. And this brush may even be too large. A one in, another flat small would be fine. Light, light touch, feather touch. And I can move it around on my Lazy Susan so I can see. Do you see the highlight now? So it's, because it's wet, it might be a little shiny, but. So again, this is not, I'm not trying to cover up for Transparency, I'm just trying to put some paint. You need paint on there to blend to. Now you could, I use the word shading. You could just put pink champagne straight on this and, and kind of not do blending. But the advantage of, usually when I'm blending, I'm, I'm mixing two colors as opposed to just putting a color on top of another color. So when I put this paint on like I am right now, I could just soften that, but I'm blending into the pink champagne. Here's a clean, flat, small, as opposed to the oval, small. And we're gonna use the same pressure, very light. I'm almost doing like swoosh, uh, infinity symbols, and it's already blending a little bit, so feather touch, feather touch. I mean, barely touching this. Okay, see I have my rag, I'm discharging extra paint. And I'm just coming over this lightly. It might be a, just a little bit extra work because it's not fed, kind of a fan feathered edge, but it's all right. It's still getting the same, same feel. And I'm gonna move it around a little bit just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Looks great. Okay. If you need to wipe off areas, 
that's fine. So that, that part's done. Now keep in mind that one of the problems with the mist bottle right now is that if I spray, I could get mist, misting on the side. So i tell you what let's do. Let's pull the drawer out. And let me mist it away from my project. And I'll put it back in there. I just didn't want to get any of the misting. Okay, so we're going to put paint down first. I'm only blending in the middle, so I really don't need to get too carried away. It's nice and wet. Okay. Now we're going to come back with pink champagne. I feel like I'm uh, blocking the color. And I'm just going to put a band right there. And you can use this brush a little bit to kind of start softening in. But don't spend too much time. I'm going to go back to my oval small. Other options, I will just keep going along with other options. Something to consider is you can get a bell brush. Kind of the same idea. Hey, let's just use it. Okay, soft touch. Our goal is to get rid of any brush strokes. We want that blend to be a cloud of flawlessness. And I'm going side to side with a very light pressure. We're going to bring out that. And then you can always go back to your original color if you've gone too far out. I'm not sure. I'm, I can't quite tell if I have or if it's just drying paint. It's really loose. It's kind of a drippy. I don't know why I made it so thin. I think I just added too much water. It doesn't, it didn't really cause a problem with what I'm doing. Let me see if I can show you from a distance what I'm talking about. So right in here, I put that color in that gap. And we also shaded around the drawer front using my finger to point. This is too wet right now to do the shading. Maybe we'll come back to it. I want to demonstrate just real quick how I did that band of color. It might be too soon. It looks a little wet in there, but all I'm talking about is and my lights are just not getting along tonight. All right, sorry about that, but steady hand. I'm just coming in there and putting a band of color. Yeah, it's a little too soon. There's some wet paint in there. I'm going to have to come back. This is what I'm talking about. It's what I did on the other piece. Just want to pop these panels out. I just have to be careful because even though the brush is almost exactly the right width, when it dries, you'll be able to tell if I rush a section or not. The piece looked good without this, but I'm just being extra. I think the piece deserves a little bit of extra. And uh, I was very pleased when this brush, you can always turn the brush wider or narrower, but I loved how it fit in there really well. And this just gives a little bit of extra glam. Now I will tell you, I'm doing my best to restrain from putting gold gilding wax on this piece. I think it would look good, but I think I can also overuse gold gilding wax. I don't want to do it too much, so that's the gold gilding, yeah. So shading is, is not blending. Shading is basically one color going over dry paint. And if you think about waxing, this is kind of the idea. And I'm going to use that same brush I was just using. I'm just going to put a wide band of this color. And you want to be fairly controlled here because if you get too crazy, it's you gotta you're probably gonna have to clean it off. Now sometimes I might go a band that small, like horizontal instead of wide. And I probably should have, but we're gonna go wide. Just because. So you see that? Hopefully you can. 
There you go, that looks a little bit better. Now the bell brush is, we're gonna, we're gonna vignette, fade, shade. I, like I said, I call it shading. I'm just gonna fade that out. I, I don't want any brush strokes. I want a kind of a soft, cloudy. If it's sticky, that's because you're, I got a little bit of stuff. If it's, if it's sticky, you don't have enough water. Sometimes I will come back and mist, but do not mist. As soon as you mist on here, you're gonna add spots. So you just need to make sure to mist before, because once you've misted, you really can't go back unless you missed all of it. Now I'm gonna use my rag, because I don't want paint on the, this trim and I'm just using my finger to strategically remove any excess without touching where I just blended. And if I have to, I can come back with a brush and touch any of that up. But... So let's be, let's, let's review. The middle we blended with two colors. Uh, T-Rose and the pink champagne. And then on the edge, we shaded with a custom mix. If you're watching a replay, let me know. If you have any questions, I'm always glad and happy to help on those and excited about that. But thanks for tuning in tonight. And as always, um, I'll catch you next time. Thanks friends for watching. We'll see y'all later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.